Previously on Let's Talk About It. What do you think you've seen different with a with a woman that has, you know, she's grown up without a father mm-hmm. versus a woman that has grown up with a father in the household? What do you think has, has have you seen different? One thing I've seen different is that a woman without a father craves a lot more attention, affection, loving. Like, not like, I love you, like, literally kiss me on the forehead, you know what I'm saying? Tell me you're proud of what I just did. Like, they crave the father affection from their partner. Mm. Versus a woman who has a father doesn't crave as much. Um, I'm going to stop you right there. I'm going to stop you right there. I'm going to start with that one part two. So finally, we get men to open up. I don't know if they really understand that that's really all women are looking for. We're not asking for too much. We just want to kind of get into the mind of a man. But, you know, I guess let's just get back to the episode. All right, we're back, we're back, we're back. Uh, welcome to part two. Uh, so let's talk about the podcast. Um, first episode, first of all, the conversation uh, talked about a lot, bro. But we got a lot more to unpack. Like I was saying, you both you both have a different dynamic with your wives. Um, you know, because, you know, we're, we're, we're friends, we're a friend group, so we all know each other's uh, you know, stuff. But, you know, your wife, she's she's grown up, you know, kind of not with the father in the house. Mm-hmm. And you grew up, you know, and your wife grew up with, with a father in the house. So what have you seen, bro, as the dynamics have changed? What, do y- what have y'all seen with somebody that has grown up with a father around or um, he hasn't grown up with a father around and somebody that has? Okay, so I'll speak on hasn't had a father. Uh, one thing about my wife. Uh, and I love it, but she craves a lot of fatherly attention and she doesn't realize it. Like anytime, like case in point, this past, um, it was today, actually, uh, my youngest daughter, Cadence, she, first of all, y'all know Cadence, she eats any and everything. <laughs> this was the one day she just didn't want to drink the smoothie that Nana had made for her. Mm-hmm. So I don't know how she got her to finally do it, but she got her to do it. And she she looked at me and was like, babe, I got her to do it. And I was just like, cool. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, because, like, you know, we don't usually, and I told her, like, you know, it's different with Harmony because Harmony don't normally eat stuff. Right. So if Harmony do it, it's like, yes, all right, cool. But Cadence is a cookie monster. Like, she eats everything. So I was like, you know what I'm saying? Like, hey, no. and but she immediately was like, I wanted more. Mm-hmm. I wanted like, good job. Good, good. And it's like, I thought to myself, like, that's the fatherly aspect happening. You know what I'm saying? Like, and it's been other situations where it was like, I would love on my children one way, and she would want the same love that I'm giving my children. Not like husband love. She wants like, kiss on me like you would kiss on your daughter. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? And it's like, I'm not mad at it because I know the situation, but the dynamic of the affection and the love is way different from a woman that did not have a fatherly figure because that is a part that she does want to be filled. You know what I'm saying? As much as everybody's gonna tell her, you know, you can't expect your husband to feel that or, you know, you need therapy or da 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 da, that, that, that's, she's gonna naturally want that. You know what I'm saying? So, the affection level is way higher than a normal wife would want. It's it's way higher. So you think so you think that she she would be more needy. Yeah. In a sense, because you know, she needs the fatherly, I guess, love in a sense. Yeah. Yeah, and it's it makes it even worse because, you know what I'm saying? And it's it's dangerous because she's even told me at times where she gets jealous of her children. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? And that's the thing. And it's like, I'm, I'm so glad when she tells me that because I am no one to pass judgment, especially on my wife. And it's like, it's stuff I need to know like that. You know what I'm saying? Because that's real. Mm-hmm. You didn't have a father. 
Yeah. And you're you're living with two girls who have a father that loves them. So it's like, mm. I need that same love from my husband. I want the same. I don't want. I want the same shit you doing with them with me. I want you to kiss me goodnight. You know what I'm saying? Like I want you to pick me up. Like you pick them up. Is that pressure for you though? Is that is, is that pressure? So the only reason it's kind of pressure for me, and you you've seen the interaction with me and my family. I did not come from an affectionate family. Yeah, no, I'm saying. You know what I'm saying? Like all that hugging shit. Like that, that's just not my family. And she's seen that, but it's just it's she still wants it. So it's definitely pressure because, to a sense, it's changing my personality. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Because like I said, like. We were not affectionate. And even even to, you know what I'm saying, I have to filter what I say with her. And you, you've you met my father. Mm. He has no filter whatsoever. Like, you know what I'm saying? I've never had a situation where my dad filtered something when he told me something. Mm. It was just straightforward. Like, case in point, like, you know, me being a musician, I play something wrong. Bro, that's wrong. What are you doing? Mm. That's, not, that's not the record. What are you doing? Versus... Oh, you sound great, but duh, duh, duh. and I'm not knocking my dad for that because that's why you know I am where I am now. That's why I have the discipline. But I never came up with the affection and the let me start with the good stuff first, and then let me ease into it. It was always like I'm I'm gonna tell you what it is, and you know love you, <laughs> pound it. Right. You feel me? Like it was it I wasn't like a lot of hugs and I can't I I can count on one hand how many times I like kissed my mom. Wow. Mm. And that's and that's real talk. And again, that's not knocking how I was raised, but that's just. And I think in general, like the area that I came up with, that just wasn't a thing. It wasn't. You're that right. wasn't a thing. You know what I'm saying? So and dealing with and then for one, I feel like the South was completely different than where we're from. The North, for sure. You know what I'm saying? So that's one aspect. And then marrying somebody that didn't have a father. Yeah. It's it's a lot of pressure. Mm. It's a lot of pressure, but. Uh, it's a lot of pressure. I'm just leave it that. It's a lot of pressure. I feel it, man. Uh, that's true, man. I, you know, that, that's true, man. Um, me, to be transparent, Christina had a problem where I felt like I was too affectionate and she wasn't. Um, and then also, I felt like she wanted me to be where her dad was or is. What, what is that? Um, I don't know. Let's just, let's just throw out a general thing, right? Um, my dad put up his shoes. Why don't you put up your shoes? Boy, you know what I'm saying? I mean, I mean, just say anything. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, um, what and, and I had to tell him, like, listen, I'm not your father. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm me. I'm this. Like, we're building what we're building. Um, but yeah, the, the the affection is 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 definitely different. Um, and the things that maybe I couldn't answer for her, and she goes. Him. You know what I'm saying? Gotcha. Um, which is which can be a little sensitive to a married man because yeah. you're more so you're the head of the house. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? It's like, well, just because I don't have an answer, don't mean we can't figure it out together. Right. You know what I'm saying? Now, granted, it's a blessing to still have your father around. It's still it's a blessing um, that you know you're, you're able to call somebody who's wise. Yeah. You know that can help you through stuff, but at the same time, you don't trust that I'll get it done, and you don't trust right. that this or et cetera. Wow. So um, I feel like the the, the, the dynamics um, can be a little tricky. Mm. It could be a little tricky um, and a little sensitive. Um, but I really had a big problem with affection. And uh, to this day, like, we've had conversations. I'm like, you know, like, I feel like I'm doing more than, than you are. And I don't know how affection they were. I mean, what she told me, you know, shout out to my pops. Uh, but, <laughs> you know, she told me, you know, my dad was, uh, he wasn't strict with him, but he was a, he was a, like, he was a father. He was the leader. He was the man. Yeah. So she, 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 she needs that from me. Not that I'm not, I'm not doing it. It's just, she's used to seeing she's something. That. Yeah. She's so used to seeing that that she expects that. Mm -hmm. So to break that cycle, to break that cycle and, uh, and to, to build your own, to build your own foundation, to build your own home, it's, 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 it can be a lot. It can do, you think, be a lot. do you think she, does she, does she even realize how that may affect you or, or make you feel when she goes to her father for 
send advice or whatever it is that that she can't come to you and and, and... um i don't i heard that i think i i don't think the the first initial no but i think if i express it it's a conversation that she has to she has to address yeah um and i think once she addresses it then you know we, we can move forward but you can't change it one day right like it takes time it takes conversations it takes examples it takes experience to be like oh hey look you're doing it again or you know this is the like just ask me or you know etc you know um but the the first initial thought uh -uh. Mm, i feel it but now it's, it's definitely two totally different worlds bro it's two totally different worlds um even before her uh my wife uh just just girls i've talked to in general they they didn't have fathers and the attention they i think corey was talking from a standpoint of i think we we're saying from you giving them attention right mm -hmm. the other chick she was giving me more attention because she wanted to treat me like a king because she didn't have it mm, i got you so she wanted to, she was on everything she was doing everything. no disrespect to my wife but i'm just i mean this is way you know before her yeah but yeah, she she was on everything. She was, I mean, anything, bro. She just she wanted me to feel like that king because she didn't have that. In because her life. she didn't have it in her life. Just so she's overly submissive. Overly submissive. Wow. Mm -hmm. Overly submissive. I know. I know you have you know you have daughters, Corey. Mm -hmm. And uh, do you think you do things now, or you're raising them a certain way because you're more sensitive to the fact that your, your wife hasn't grown up with with that in the household i tried my best but like and this is one thing that i battled you know we was just talking about like the finance thing you know mm -hmm. what i'm saying like with me having being the only one that's providing finances and you know we're going through our financial season where it's it's like you know thin ice you know what i'm saying it's hard for me to be around my daughters as much as I would like to, given the fact that my wife didn't have a father. So that right there, I put a lot of pressure on me because I know that a lot of the frustration that comes from my wife is she's immediately thinking back to how her father was a president mm. when I'm working. Traumas. Okay. You know what I'm saying? And it's like, that's where it starts to become, that's where a lot of our arguments come from, where it's like, you need to be home at a certain time, da 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 da. Yeah. And I try to tell her, and it's like, Alex, you can attest to this. Mm -hmm. Being a full time musician, you can't just say, I'm gonna be home at this time. No, it it don't change. it don't work that way. Right. You know what I'm saying? A lot of stuff changed, especially when you were MD. Right. You know what I'm saying? Artists change stuff all the time. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? It's and then when you're dealing with programming, that's a whole nother time frame you gotta deal with. Yeah. To fix that stuff, you can't just say, I'm going to go home and I'll fix it when I come in the next day. They're not trying to hear that. Right. You know what I'm saying? You got to fix it right in there. And that's even like the church I play at, the platform, I can't tell them that. Mm -hmm. I can't say, I'm going to deal with it tomorrow. I got to go home. It's 4 o'clock. <laughs> I can't say that. It's not. Nah, we need to make sure it's cool now. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And then there's so many different, and this, this is what I'm trying to explain more. There's so many different aspects because the bigger the production, the more stuff you got to take in, take in toll with. Like for me, everything I do reflects the media department, yeah. the singers, the band, all that stuff. So any change I make has to be done correctly because everything else around it is going to be affected. So when she looks at, and then when she looks at that and sees that, you know, I'm not gonna be home at three o'clock, I'm gonna be home at nine because they made a change that I had to adjust to. The first thing I assume that she thinks is, you're not home with your daughter, your daughter is asking for you. Now it gives her a flashback mm -hmm. of the fact that my, my dad wasn't around. I don't want my daughters to experience that. And then the argument's coming. And I think I, in, in this, I mean, that's true. The, sen the, the sensitivity rate is different. Yeah. I feel like she, for Christina, she will always have in the back of her mind, my dad will do it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, okay, you're not here. I'll fly back home. You know, that I, I'll spend time. With, like, whatever you're not, mm -hmm. he's going to be. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Is that healthy, you think, though? Um, 
It for it's y'all. Healthy for y'all. Mm, no. No. Because I mean even biblically it says you're supposed to cling to your husband. Mm. Mm-hmm. You're not supposed to be clinging to your parents. You know what I'm saying? Um, you're supposed to cling to your husband. And he could probably attest to that too. You know, he'll say, no, you need to talk to your husband. Talk to, you know what I'm saying? To this day, he does that. 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 He's like, no, you talk to your husband. Have you talked to your husband? Have you, you know what I'm saying? But he's still a father. You know what I'm saying? Um, which is, which is a dope thing. But, um, you know, if, if it was that intense, if it, if it was, it could be abusive. Mentally, yeah, it can be abusive physically because it's like I'm here and you don't see me, right? right, right. Yeah. I'm your husband, like I'm your husband, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, I'm the one who's doing you, I'm the one who's like, <laughs> we're paying, you know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> I mean, I'm, not, I'm, 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 being, I'm being honest, I'm you not, know what I'm saying? Not, not talk, you though. know, but like the sensitivity rate is different, the things that's, that London, you know, might trip about, she, she wouldn't. You know what I'm saying? The sensitivity is just different. Right. It's different. I think I, for Brittany, she kind of had issues with her dad when I first met her. Like they were at odds. But I didn't, I didn't think she had daddy issues. I knew she, she wanted structure. She wanted stability. She wanted somebody to, to, to love. She wanted that same dynamic. You know what I'm saying? And, uh, I'm thankful that I had an example. Because I, I'm gonna ask y'all, how do you how you think it changes, or maybe how do you think it affects the way we see women and treat our women by how we're raised and how we see our fathers treat our mothers? It's a big thing. Because and I and I ask this because I see my the way the way I see my dad love my mom was by strictly providing. Like I'm gonna work my ass off to the bone. Mm-hmm. I didn't necessarily see a lot of affection, though. I didn't see him loving on her. I seen him stepping up as a man and, and being there, you know, to, to, to take care of anything that needed to happen. Mm-hmm. And I feel like that was his way of showing love. But I didn't learn from him how to how to love on my woman. Mm-hmm. I kind of had to figure that out myself, so to speak. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? But what do y'all think? What, what has changed for so, y'all? For me, I see my dad provide more than anything, mm-hmm. but he made sure that he set aside certain time to tend to the family. You know what I'm saying? It wasn't like a, you know what I'm saying? Every week I'm home at this time to make sure it was a, I'm working. Cause I actually talked to him about this the other day. Cause I was like, you know what I'm saying? Dad, am I tripping? Am I working too much? And he's right. like, no, you know what I'm saying? Y'all don't realize how much I work because I never made it evident to y'all. Like I never made it to where it was like, okay, dad's gone. I made it to where when I'm not gone, I'm present. Because I he he explained it to me, like I never noticed that my dad was never there for Christmas. I never noticed that. Hmm. And he told me that. He was like, Christmas Eve, all that stuff. I was never there. Hmm. I was there Christmas Day. That's why then, because he used to be a jeweler. So, you know, Christmas season, everybody wants jewelry. So, you know what I'm saying? Right, right, right. People it's working all, all types of hours. And, but I never yeah. noticed it because once that season was over, he, he told, and he literally told us the other day, I made sure I saved enough to take us on a vacation and I did not take my phone. Wow. So that, that they all, he was like, literally tell me what you remember. And I was like, I just remember us going on vacation. Yeah. That's it. He was like, you don't remember me working because I didn't make it a situation where it was like, okay. I'm going to work. Yeah. It was just life. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. but when we go on vacation, you're going to remember this because we're going somewhere and I'm giving you all my attention. So that's what I saw from my dad. Even when it came to my mom, like, did I see them affectionate all the time? No. But when it was special anniversary or, you know, birthdays, whatever the case, my dad would go all out. And my wife would tell you, I'm that type of person. Mm-hmm. Like every day, am I like that? No, because I'm always busy. But like Valentine's Day, mm-hmm. I'll make sure she'll wake up to something crazy. Mm-hmm. Birthdays, I try to plan something crazy. You know what I'm saying? And I told, I've told her before, like, one thing I want to do, I know I work a lot, but there's going to be a certain time where there's going to be one week in the year that I don't take my phone with me. Mm-hmm. And we go somewhere and it's a hundred percent us. Because I know I work a lot, but I can't guarantee that every week, especially with my vision profession. I'm sorry. 
Because I actually can't, I don't even know if I told y'all, told y'all this, but I came to a point where I considered quitting music. Mm-hmm. Like, literally quitting music as a whole, not just quitting the church, not just, just quitting. Wow. quitting music as a whole and becoming a fucking teacher. Why? Mm. Because they didn't like my schedule. Who didn't like your schedule? My wife and my kids. Uh, because it's at a point now, like, Harmony doesn't like when I leave to go to work. Mm-hmm. She hates it. Like, I'm going to work. Why you gotta go to work? Can you stay home? My daughter is asking me this. To that point, do you think she's asking that because she sees her mom asking that? Yes, and I also think she's asking that because because I know how my wife feels about it. I talk to my daughter about it. I don't just let it like you know what I'm saying. We're going to work. I actually sit my daughter down and say, "I'm going to work. I'll be back." So now she's aware that when I'm leaving, I'm going to work. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? I, because I can't let it slide because me and my wife talk about it because that's something she's battled with as a child. That her, you know what I'm saying? Her mom, for one, her dad wasn't there. Yeah. And two, her mom worked a lot. You know what I'm saying? And you you know this, you yeah. know what I'm saying? Because her and Britt are best friends. Yeah. They talk about that stuff. So they was with their grandmother for the mo- for the most part. You know what I'm saying? So yeah. she sees me going out to work and she feels the need to explain it to Harmony, which kind she kind of has to because Harmony's not your typical child. Very smart. She's very smart. Very intelligent. You know what I'm saying? So she sees me walking out the door and she's like, she's not just like, you know, all right, bye, dad. She's like, hold up. Where are you going? You know what I'm saying? Like, how long are you about to be going? Mm. You said you was going to do X, Y, and Z. Mm. You said you're supposed to be home mm. at this time. That's my four year old. You know what I'm saying? That's so crazy. it's, 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 it's hard. Yeah. I, I, am um, my dad, man. My dad is, was a provider. <laughs> like he's, that's all I've seen, bro. I always see my dad working, like they ask working, him. bro. <laughs> um, which also kind of made me feel less confident if I wasn't working as much as he was. Yeah. Man. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, man, man, am I doing enough? Am I? You know what I'm saying? And I, but I think the older I got, I realized how, how important time is. And not to get dark, but we all have a date on our tombstone. We don't know the time that we're able to spend with your daughter or your wives, your parents and stuff like that. And you really have to nurture that. So what I took from that was, I don't want to be that. Mm. I want to be what I feel like I need to be you know what I'm saying? Yeah. To want that, but to need is two totally different things. You know what I'm saying? So now I'm like I'm in a I'm, I'm in a space of where, yes, I'm 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 going to work hard, but I'm going to work hard to the point to where uh, I have time. Like I'm able to build out, you know, my 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 time. I found my affection from my mother. Yeah. I, I felt like I used to give a kiss. I used to give the hug. To this day, I call the phone. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? Like it's still, it's still that. So part of that made me, made me look at Christina and like, why am I not getting that? For you? you know what I'm saying? Why, why are you not doing that? To me? You know what I'm saying? Um, but it, but going back to my dad, um, I I saw his affection too. I, I saw his affection too, and I also heard it. You heard it. <laughs> you need to. Oh, uh, <laughs> what do you mean you heard it? First of all, heard what, you again? Quick, what? Quick story. I had uh, I I was laying in the bed and I heard I heard my uh, I heard my mom. It was like maybe it was two three o'clock in the morning. I, I might have been like seven six grade whatever, right? I heard my mom. She says, "Dad, stop, 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 Dad, oh, Dad, Dad, oh, Jesus Christ, Dad, oh." Right? She's doing all that. What? So then I run it. I run it along. I said, "Get off my mommy! Get off my mommy!" And he was in there. I mean, it, it was. What? It was victory all in that room. You hear me? There was no sorrow. There was no pain anywhere. I'm like, oh, God. okay. 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 All right. Jesus Christ. You know, so I, I, I heard it too. And I also saw it too. You know, I heard him say, I love you. I heard him uh, bring the flowers. You know, I, I saw him do nice things. Um, but most importantly, 
the providing was a lot. I never felt as though that I got cheated out of time, but because I feel like he kind of always made time for, but he was also disciplined. He's mm-hmm. militant, so it was it was it was a balance. It was like I'm militant, but I'm militant because I don't want you to grow up to be this type of person. I'm militant because I, I need you to be this, and I'm showing you mm-hmm. what you need to be. Mm-hmm. I'm showing you how to take care of your family. Uh, and then on top of that, not just outside of my dad, having two other brothers, seeing them, the way they take care of their family, like it's, it's nobody goes without any food. Nobody goes without any clothes. Yeah. Stuff is taken care of. You know what I'm saying? So I feel like I kind of get it from, from both generations, you know, my dad and, and, and my brothers, you know what I'm saying? My two older brothers too. Um, yeah. but it, it was definitely a providing thing and they're mad affectionate too. So. You know, what you see is what you become. What you hang around is what you become. Yeah. I honestly feel like most, if you grow up in a two-parent home, yeah, mm-hmm. most people see their fathers being a provider. Yeah. Like, I remember T.D. Jake saying something where, um, I can't remember exactly what he said, but he was like, if the husband is the sole provider, he's home a lot. There's something wrong. Right. That's a problem. You know what I'm saying? And it's like, that's, that's, for one, that's the role of the husband, of the father, to be the sole provider because if something goes wrong, and this is what I try to explain to my wife all the time, why it goes so hard. If we win it, if we good, it looks like our marriage is rocking and us as a unit are made to happen. Yeah. If shit goes south, it's, it's us. Yeah. It's what was your husband doing? You know what I'm saying? Not what were y'all doing. The wife is out now. It's like, okay, husband, yeah. this is your responsibility. What the hell happened? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? But, yeah, but, yeah, but, but, but the breakdown of providing, because I feel like that's such a... Yeah, let's figure this out. That's such a broad... You know what I'm saying? It's, it's like, okay, providing is leading. Providing is financials. Uh, providing is mental. Mm-hmm. How you deal with the person. You know what I'm saying? Are you abusive? But I mean, that's, mm-hmm. you know, um, what I say, uh, leading, what, what, what did I just say? Uh, Emotion, leading. Yeah, yeah, all that. Is, to me, I feel like all of that is, that's providing to me. It's not just what can you do? No, it's emotional, it's physical, it's mentally. Yeah. All of that is providing to me. Yeah, I think, I think so too. I think, I think presence. Is also part of that providing. Like you, you gotta provide a sense of, of presence and stability to not only your wife but to the people you're raising. And I say that because I think I think men we may be losing sight of the importance of being in the home. You know, if I I just um I think I reposted one of these posts uh, about you know two parent households are increasing. Now, mm-hmm. and I think that's it's important because for so long that hasn't been the narrative, bro. You know, like why do we feel like it's not important that to to be in the home and be present in the home and be able to provide stability and emotional support and emotional stability? You know what I'm saying? Like why why do we feel like it's not important anymore? So I don't mean to put you off, but I have a question. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So because sometimes it's not that simple. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like sometimes you're in a situation where your finances mm-hmm. are a big problem. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So you have to make a decision. Am I going to do what I can to make sure we're financially straight, which means I'm losing my time with my family, or am I going to prioritize my time with my family? And whatever happens with finances is what happens. Yeah. What do you do in a situation like that? Well, I, I would think, I think in that situation, you're doing what's best for your family. I'm thinking about the person that you're laying down, you're, you're laying with a woman, you have a baby with a woman, mm-hmm. and you're not there for that child. Like, you're like, you're not even there for her, but you're definitely not there for the child. So you're not in the home, you're not, you're not trying to provide anything stability-wise, emotional-wise, you know what I'm saying? You're not trying to do that. You're actually just trying to live your life. Like, why, why have we gotten to that point? Oh, okay. You know what I'm saying? Like. Mm-hmm. There's been a there's been a, a a gap, and there's too many men being raised by just women, and we gotta be able to change that. I think, you know, 
it's it's really about the dynamic of how you how you grew up, like you said, like what have you seen? Mm-hmm. If you if you don't know what it's like to have a grown man in the house and leading in his house, how do you know to do that for yourself? How do you know to do how do you know to lead when you decide to have a family or decide to lay down with a woman or whoever and have a child? You know what I'm saying? I, I, I feel like it's only by experience. I feel like it's by conversation. It's about mentorship. It's about counseling. All all that kind of thing. But you know what's crazy? It seems like it's it seems like it's mostly blacks that kind of go through that. Mm. I don't know. It seems like black families really don't have systematically. You know what I'm saying? Like remember, you know, back in eighties and nineties they, they stripped the men out of the homes when they you know, when the crack epidemic happened, right. they, they, they took a lot of men out of the homes. So that's when the, that's when you definitely seen a lot of men being raised by a single family, you know, single women. I, I, I feel like yeah, we're also, some of us are just not knowledgeable. Like we don't have enough knowledge in order to even mm. take on that responsibility or take on that, you know what I'm saying? Like sometimes, even if you do have experience, sometimes experience don't teach that person. Yeah. It just doesn't. They don't. They don't latch on to the experience. So then now they try to go from their own mind, but you don't know anything. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? That. Like you have nothing to to have knowledge on. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. You are. I feel it. Mm-hmm. It's a. It's it, it, it's interesting. It's an interesting uh, dynamic. Yeah, dynamic. Fatherhood, man. Mm-hmm. Uh, was you ready? Fatherhood. Was you ready for fatherhood? You know I wasn't ready. Bro. No. Hell no. <laughs> so, I thought I was ready. I, don't th- I thought I was ready. You know why? Because we, we, we as men, we feel like if, we, if we're straight financially, we're ready. And that's where we mess up. Mm-hmm. That's where we mess up. Cause I yeah. try, and the crazy thing is, I told you that. Yeah. Like, because... I remember you always telling me, like, I just want, I just want to get our finances straight. And mm-hmm. it took for me to have my daughter to realize that's ten percent of it. That's really literally. Was that like a gym? Yeah. Oh shit! Yeah. 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 That's a gym. <laughs> Whoa! You drink my apple juice? Mm-hmm. But yeah, man. Um, it took for me to have because when I when I when we when we got pregnant with Harmon. First thing I said to myself was, I gotta get my bag up. You know what I'm saying? I gotta, I gotta do this, I gotta do that. Pressure. You know, right. Mm-hmm. But it's not that. It's time. Mm-hmm. It's time. You know what I'm saying? Like, how much time do you have? How can you, like, how can you set aside the time to be there for your child? Money is not the biggest thing because at the end of the day, you can, first of all, here's a gem for everybody that's about to have kids, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Buy diapers either weekly, bi weekly, or monthly. However you want to do it, whatever your budget, you know, however your budget works for you. Before you have your child, buy diapers. I don't know. I did I did yeah, I did it consistent with buying diapers. I did it weekly. Cause what happens is if you don't open the box, you can take it back and exchange it for a different size. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Gems. Gems. <laughs> and the same thing with wipes. Because what I did was I bought diapers and wipes once a week. Diapers are about $25 for, you know, like the super pack. Wipes are about $15 for about 542 wipes. I bought one each week. When we had Harmony. I didn't have to buy diapers or wipes for like a year because I just stacked up on it. You know what I'm saying? And then the other thing was my wife breastfed, so I didn't have to pay for a formula. Yeah, but it's it, a blessing. It, yeah, it, but it wasn't the money. It was the time and the mental. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Because what I realized is, especially in that first six months, yo, that shit is a lot, bro. Like, if, if you ever had a puppy, times that shit by 15. Like, real talk. And I'm, talk, I'm, I'm talking about the first stages of the puppy. Barking all night, lying, going to the bathroom in the house, all that shit. Times about 15. That is a big. That is a big. And it's not. It's it's not like not granted. You need. You do need to have money because you have a job. I ain't, I'm not. I'm not saying you don't have to have money, but that needs to be the least of your worries. 
Really? Yes. Like you really need to be. But let me ask you. Let me ask you a question. Did it get to that place once the baby came, or did you figure that out before? What that we wasn't ready? No, that money wasn't. I didn't figure that out that, until after we had home. Yeah, at, until after we had. Yeah, at, until after we had Caden, I didn't realize like money was the smallest really? portion of what I yeah, did. Man. Yeah. I it's just like, I put it this way, this is a perfect example. This is a perfect example for you, right? Okay. When you go on tour, mm -hmm. is your musical ability one of the most important things? Yes. Really? Yeah, you got, what do you mean? No, I've heard, it's, I'm when you go on tour, I've heard that your musical ability is obviously important, yeah. but it's not one of the most important things. Yeah, well, yeah. It's, it's your characteristics, right, right, you, right, you know right, what I'm saying? Your right, right, personality, yeah, because yes. yes, you can play, but that's like 20% of it. Yeah. What is it like to live with you? Because we, as essentially, we're going every on day, tour. Every day. I have to live with you. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? It's the same thing. Like, yes, you would think that money is the most important thing, but it's not. It is very important and you have to have it. Just like going on tour. Your musical ability is very important. Yeah, it's small. And you have to have it, but it's it's minimal. It's small. Because the other thing is, do you stink? I gotta live with you. You know what I'm saying? What's your personality right. like? What's your hygiene right. like? What's your eating habits like? Yeah. You know, do you smoke too much? Mm. Do you not drink enough? Mm. Like all that stuff matters. And it's the same thing with a baby. Like, what is my time like? Where's my mental state? What 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 is our schedule like right now? Like all that stuff matters because postpartum is a whole different wait so game. so men have postpartum yes a hundred percent yes y'all have postpartum a hundred percent whoa yes they do yeah bro I'm, I mean we doing a whole podcast on that but yes it's real yes they what do. is the worst what is the worst thing that you dealt with well I guess you what's the worst thing that you dealt with postpartum patience bro like I'm a I'm an impatient person that's postpartum what think patience about this, is postpartum Hey, bro, that's the to a certain extent. When to a certain extent, in the very beginning, when 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 Caden was was born, we would in the middle of the night we would make him a bottle, right? You don't you don't you you're not ready for you never sleep the same. Mm -hmm. You never you never get the same amount of sleep ever again. So, <laughs> if I gotta wake up two a year and I gotta pop up to make a bottle. I noticed that I was popping up and I was, I was angry. I was so angry to the point where I'm like, I'm losing sight of, man, I, who are you doing this for? You have a whole child that you brought into this world that's innocent. Mm. You know what I'm saying? And when he says angry, he means angry, bro. Like it's literally. You are mad. Angry, you're mad. Yeah. Yes, bro. And you don't want, you don't want to, you don't want to exude that to your child, though. Mm. You know what I'm saying? You're, you're dealing with stuff mentally. Like, yes, your whole life is turned up too. Mm. You know, they ain't asked to be here. The crazy thing is, I still, my children are four and two, and I still deal with that because my children right, are still Tuesday. waking up in the middle of the night. Yeah, to this day. Tuesday. Yes, Tuesday. and Tuesday. I wake up, and we got a camera, and my, yeah. my four year old is like, Daddy, come get me. And I'm mad, like, yo, and I, I'm going to just say what, be, what I be thinking in my head. Please get your ass up mm -mm. and walk. To our room. Mm -hmm. I'm not coming to get you. Now I'm frustrated. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And it's like, it's little stuff like that that just puts you in a mental state that you don't even know you're in. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Just because now the rest of your day is fucked up just that quick. Are you serious? I'm, for me. For me. I, just that quick. I'll say this. I mean, I, I, I don't have any children, but I do have a, I do have a, a little Yorkie, right? And I'm not, I'm not saying that he's human, but. I, I would think that the responsibility is kind of the same. Getting up and walking, uh, dealing with the barks, dealing with the disobedience, you disciplining that, stuff like that. I have a problem with that. Like, he pisses me off. Mm -hmm. And then certain days I'm like, oh, come in, little man, you know, little pretty, you know, this is my dog. But other days I'm like, get the fuck. I don't feel like walking you today. Mm -hmm. I don't feel like walking you today. That's Christina, you go walking. And then she'll say, then she'll say, are you going to act like this with our child? Like, you, no, this is an animal. She's like, no. Time out. This is, you're 100% going to act like that with your child. Sorry, I got to fix it. 
I gotta fix it. It's it's a, it's, gotta, I mean, it's about it's like about I, catching I, it. I have understanding where you are. I literally have no patience for that nigga. Like I, <laughs> like I don't. So think about it. Like I said, this is an animal. You're talking about your flesh and blood, and it's on times ten, Alex. I'm not playing with you. Like <laughs> times ten. It's I'm, I'm serious, bro. That's like it's, and this is where you know. Postpartum kind of taps in because now you're in an emotional state that you can't get out of. You're there now. Like, just a small thing, like, I don't want to go get them tonight. You go get them. You're, the whole rest of your day is messed up because now you're up at 3.30 in the morning. You're trying to go back to sleep, but you can't. And now you got to get up and work. Mm. You got to do work. And it's hard for us because we have to, we as musicians yeah. have to keep our composure. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And I deal with this in the church. You feel me? Like mm. anything is traumatic when, when you're dealing with change. Yeah. And when we talk about your life changing, your life will never be the same. You won't be the same person. Nah. So think about that happening abruptly. Like today you are who you are and tomorrow, Oh, it's all changed. You know what I'm saying? Like that that's gonna make anybody react, you know, or respond a certain way that may not, you know, that may not be suitable. Mm. So it's real. But I mean uh, that's it something are you prayer, ready? Bro. Do you feel like you're ready for for, for fatherhood? <laughs> um you know, I, I think it's like marriage. I, I think, you know, when people say you can't prepare for marriage, you just have to go through it. Yeah. I feel like that's what it is. I was child. just about to say that. Like, I feel like I, I don't I have a child. Even other people's children, I don't know how to have that effect because I, I don't have my own. You know what I'm saying? So, I was like that. I was like, yeah. That. So when I see y'all, I'm like, damn. I wonder what that feels like. It's bro. It's it's cool. It's a, it's, no. a, it's a feeling that like, Jesus. I, no, no. I, <laughs> no I, listen, 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 listen Cause like one thing I try to explain to people, cause it's so easy to catch baby fever mm. when you can give them back. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. You know what I'm saying. Like, I and that's why I say it's cool. Like when you when you experience it on the uncle side or the cousin side or the brother side, it's a cool thing. Yeah. When you experience it on the parent side, shit get rough really quick. And it's like it's one of them things. Like I will always tell people. Like, the last thing you need to worry about when you find out you're having a child is the monetary aspect. You need to start praying for your mental state. Mm. And that's real talk. That's me being 100%. Like, the first thing you need to do every single day is pray. Lord, give me the time that I need. Give me the mental state that I need. It's not about the money. You know, not, not to cut you off, it's, it's that, that's a very real thing. Um, to be transparent, like I felt like I've been holding it off with Christina as far as getting her pregnant because I was so selfish in not sharing her. I wasn't, I'm not ready to share her. I'm not ready to share her with another human being knowing that most of my time will be, you know, with the child or most of her time will be with the child. Sex is going to change, this is going to change, all that's going to change. And I was sensitive and felt bad eventually because I'm like, you don't deserve that. You you prayed for a husband that was going to take care of you, that was going to build a family and all this type of stuff. And I'm hindering you because of my own self problems, my own self mental um, flesh situation that's going on with inside of me that I'm not confident in thinking that I'm ready to share you yet. Like that's mm -hmm. not, it's not healthy and it's not fair. But at the same time, and this is coming from somebody that experienced it, it's, I get what you're saying that it's not healthy in the spirit, but it's realistic because, and the reason I say it's realistic is because there's literally been situations where I would hug on my wife, love on my wife, and our children would step in between us. Man, that happens all the time. You know what I'm saying? Really? Like, Katie, real talk. Katie, like, Katie pop up. Real, real talk. <laughs> like, and it's, and, it's, and it's not even off no sex. Tip. I love like, it. It's off of a... I come yeah. home yeah. and I haven't seen my wife all day. I didn't address my kids. You know what I'm saying? I love y'all. Hey, I want to come hug my wife. Yeah. Man. I haven't seen my wife. I love my wife. I want to love with my wife. I want to kiss my wife. 
and I will hug my wife and kiss my wife and literally cadence will, would split us up. Mm. Would literally split us up and we would try, obviously, you know, see a baby, she's not going to split us up, but now she starts fussing. It's, mm. it's a different like, thing I love though. Bro, I, 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 I'll put an extra. Is it hard to love your children daily? No, nah, not hard. It's, nah, not it's, hard. it's hard to tolerate yeah. them daily. Mm. It's not hard to love. Uh, Every day is a different day. Running, running from the front of a car for my child. Mm. It's like love. It's the frustration of raising somebody that they don't know what they're doing yet. They're, this, they're developing. So they don't know that you're frustrated. They don't know that you're mad right now. They don't, they don't understand any of that. Right. And, and that's what's hard about it. It gets worse when they get older. Mm. And this is coming yeah. from somebody with a four year old. Like, like I said, like, I get frustrated, mm -hmm. my daughter gets upset. Mm. Like, it's not a situation where, like, babies, like, Kaylin don't understand yet. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Harmony yeah. understands. She Lucky. sees when I get frustrated with her, mm -hmm. and her feelings get hurt. And, and she hard. tells me, Ooh, like, Daddy, you hurt. Daddy, you hurt. Oh, literally, bro. Like, Daddy, you hurt my feelings. Why did you talk? Because some, I'm not going to lie to you, yo. It'd be sometimes that I get frustrated and I raise my voice. And she literally says to me, Daddy, you hurt my feelings the way you just yelled. Bro, that would kill me. I, bro, hey, we're going to the rest. I'm sorry. <laughs> and it's, and it's I'm buying a, I'm buying, I'm buying a whole aisle three right now. Bruh. And then there's been situations <laughs> where, like, because, and, and, and this is just me being transparent because this is where my, I, I pray every day that yeah. God works on my patience because my kids are a lot, bro. And you'll know because one of these days, I'm going to let y'all watch them. Man. I'm gonna let y'all watch them. Both of them at the same time. Jesus They're a lot. And there's been there's been times where I've raised my voice at Cadence and she looked at me and just burst into tears. And it's rough, you know what I'm saying? But it's like at the same time, y'all do so much to where it's like yeah. it builds up. It builds up. And it's like it's certain situations where you just you you can't hold it in. It's like, yo, sit down. Mm. You know what I'm saying? But when I say it with a certain tone, their feelings are hurt. And now they're at the age where they tell me, like, bro, you just hurt my feelings. Like, why are you talking it's to me? It's tough, man. Let me ask y'all, yo. What, what do men want, bro? What do we really want? What you mean? And what? In all sex. Because we definitely sex. Shit. Sex? What do you want sex? Head. Hey. Oh. Yep. <laughs> I'm about to give all the women a gym. Uh oh, tonight. Uh oh, I'm here we go. It, men are this very, is very dream. simple. This, about to get real. this is definitely about a drink. This is definitely a drink. Men are very, very simple. This is ice. I taste all of the Jameson. We're very simple individuals. If you want anything from him, you do everything without him asking. Mm. Say, that, say that again. That's if key. you want everything from him, yeah. you do everything for him without asking. Perfect, perfect example. Perfect example. You know what I'm saying? He's in his office working. He's coming and suck his dick. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> that's all I'm saying. That's you know, all I'm saying. Literally, if he had, if do not allow him to ask, just do it. That's how you get yourself a car. I'm t car, ring, all this stuff. Real, Real shit. Oh, that women are thinking about, like. <laughs> Slurp master. It's Listen. really not that hard. We're really very simple. Yo, but, but you know what? To, to, to <laughs> suck us. <laughs> <laughs> Literally. Now y'all know Malcolm Garrison is out of pocket. Is that what y'all really want? That's what y'all want? Okay. <laughs> I'm just telling the truth. I don't know what she's talking about, but I'm definitely telling the truth. I'm telling you what men think. And women, take notes. Because this is exactly what men feel like. Now let's get back to him. Let me tell you something. Let me tell you something. I don't know what it is. I told Christina, I said, baby, you don't understand the sex drive that men have. You don't understand the sex drive that I have. I need it in order to think. I need it in order to eat. I need it in order to 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 do my production. I need it. I, I, I don't hit records. I, I Listen, Burr. you know how people go to weed, you know how people go to liquor. Yes. Sex is my drive. I don't know if it's because I'm having Jamaican. I don't know what it is. But I'm like, I need you 
to sit on this <laughs> and have your way. You need to have your way. Choke me. Spit on me. <laughs> Do whatever you want. Suck my toe. <laughs> Do so. I don't care. If I'm going to get on plan, I want you to come up and say, come here. Come here. You know what I'm saying? saying? And that's the thing, yo. I feel like they don't be thinking that we gonna stop what the fuck we doing. I will always yeah. stop for that ass. Bro. I just, Listen. Yeah, I think like they think if we're if we're tired that we ain't trying to do it. No, no. We'll do it in spite of the time. I will always wake up. Always. Well at all times. Always ready. Well. But here's the thing. <laughs> I feel like I feel like the second that we get rejected though is where we feel resentment for sure now nah, that's facts and i'm done with you the Damn, rejection goes so much real, further man. just that fast yo the re the rejection goes way further than women think it does and here's the thing don't ever promise something that you don't do oh my God. sexually do not promise something that you do not do yeah that'll put a nigga in a dark place bro we are elephants when it comes to memory when it comes to that shit. elephants Bro, I didn't have so many nights where my wife just said, oh. hey, especially when we were drinking, you can't do that shit when I'm drinking, bro. Like, <laughs> we even had so many nights where it was like, you know what I'm saying? I got a little drink, you got a little drink. Ooh, when we get home, we're going to do X, Y, and Z. And we get home, and you go to sleep. That's the, I'm telling you women, I'm telling y'all. That's that shit makes me worse. Yeah. That's the worst thing like, you could ever do. Yeah, for sure. Do not do it. Yeah, no. <laughs> Do not do it. <laughs> but, but you know what? It's got to let them notice. But, but you're right, though. A no equals, uh, it's not supposed to, but it can equal rejection. Um, the other day, uh, you know, and then it's, when you're married, you're supposed to. If I if I ask you, you're supposed to do it. That's biblical. And it's biblical. You, you're supposed to do it at any time. Mm -hmm. Now, the other day, she comes home, she's tired. I said, baby, I need some pussy. <laughs> I was like, I, I need some pussy. You know, I guess I'm going to get tired, but I, I have to release some, I have to release myself. <laughs> she says, okay, baby. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. I'm working out. Give me, give me one, give me one second. I said, okay, cool. I go to the bathroom. I don't, you know, get, get myself ready. together. Get what? You're getting ready, buddy. What? It's like that double. <laughs> I mean, I'm locked in. You hear me? I'm locked in. I come out the bathroom. I said, "Oh my god, him! Oh my god!" Yo, that's the type of shit to make niggas. Run no, fight. no, but like we, like we go to a dark place then. No nah, yes. shit though. Like, but, 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 but to, but, but, but keep it real. And if it's too much rejection, this is when people start cheating. Yes, that's. That's the unfortunate truth. Of, like, it's the you know truth. They don't want to hear it. The, the, the girls don't, the wives, they, they don't want to hear it. But that's the truth. This is why men cheat. Now, hold on. If I'm married to you, you're supposed to give it to me. Why aren't you giving it to me? We don't cheat. No. Oh, no, we don't do that. Let's, you know oh. what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? We don't believe in that. We don't believe in that. We don't believe in that. We're faithful. We don't mm -hmm. believe in that. But, but, but we will educate you with it. There is dudes out there. We will educate you. Yeah. That will cheat on you over right. stuff like that. And that's and that's and that's like not even on no jokes, not even on no funny tip. Like you gotta be careful about that, yo, because you can't promise a nigga, you know what I'm saying, some chum chum. <laughs> yeah. But hey, but you but, but but you know what I hear? What you about to say? No. But you know what I hear a lot though? I hear, why should I give it when you don't really do like you gotta seduce me, you gotta do this, you gotta do that. But but like Bro, that's a whole nother conversation. Uh, it is. I mean when, Oh my god. Like all right, this is where I agree with women in a sense. Is that men do not understand intimacy. We don't. That's a fact. We don't understand intimacy because we're not taught it. We our father's not sitting us down and saying, Hey, hey son, this ain't be intimate with a woman. Mm, you're right. Nah, that's fact. That's All fact. we know is women now. Yeah, that's just true. So that's the sad part. Intimacy part, right? has to be taught by a woman. We have to be taught. What do you want? What is intimacy to you? And that's when you educate us on on what you to get you there because it's too much damn work sometimes, bro. It's, it's so it's funny you said that because I literally had to tell my wife like, men are like, in a sense, when it comes to that, yeah, like puppies. Yeah, we need direction. You know what I'm saying? You got to train us. You can't yes. and not even with sex though, like just in general. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? With just how your emotions work. Yeah. You have to train us. 
And that's the, the in my in my opinion. And y'all tell me how y'all feel about it. But that's the whole point of marriage. This is a lifetime thing. You can't expect me. Because for one, your personality changes over time. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And that's the whole point. You know what I'm saying? Like that's the whole that. commitment yeah. point of marriage. You have to be willing to love every personality change. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? But you also have to be willing to train your partner. You can't expect them to so just you know. You. you know what I'm saying? You definitely like, have to mitigate it. Because we, we consistently evolve. But let me ask you a question. Why why do you have to act so pussy? <laughs> when you're married, you should you should just say you're not you, supposed you, to. You should just say, "Hey, get, come here, come here." <laughs> she goes, "Yes," come and pull out her pants and just go crazy. Why should I be like, "Baby, hey, uh, tonight at eight o'clock, can you pull your drawers down?" Because <laughs> like, am I? Uh, uh, and here's my other thing. Here's my other thing. Like, I don't like that. It's like that. Some females. Make it seem like it always has it always has to be what they need to get them turned on in order for us to have sex. Mm, versus, sure. you know what I'm saying? What the? Because like for me, sometimes like I'm gonna just be blunt. Fuck it. Oh, like He's sometimes I just want to be nasty. You know what I'm saying? Right. Like, I don't want to be you know what I'm saying love me. I just, I'm gonna be. A, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I don't always want to be on the sex. You know what I'm saying? I love you to death. Hugging mm-hmm. me close. Sometimes I'm gonna be on some. Let's pretend we on. We let's pretend we in a motel and we don't know each other. Right, 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 right. Cause we married. We doing this shit for life. You know what I'm saying? If bro, chill. <laughs> this, 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 yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'm having sex tonight. I swear to God, I'm having sex tonight. I swear to God, I'm having sex tonight. <laughs> I swear to God, I'm going to oh my God. that ass. I swear to God. <laughs> Get your money, man. Like those no, I'm not hopeful. Yes, I am hopeful for today. Take this music and oh, use it. Let me tell you something. Side note. Mm-hmm. When your wife is pregnant, that's the best sex ever. I got to pee. I'm going to let y'all figure this out. Mm-hmm. It's good, though. I, I, it's going it's to going, it's going spark some shit. <laughs> It's gonna spark some stuff. It's some real shit, man. It's, it's good stuff. Women don't hear from men ever. Mm. We don't talk about the stuff that we talk about. Yeah. Men don't come together and, and, and really talk about. Cause yeah, I'm, I'm gonna tell you the truth. I'm, I'm gonna let y'all know. Fuck that goddamn rose. <laughs> I'm sick of that goddamn that, She is cheating on me like shit. That goddamn rose. Hurry up. Uh, I'm sorry. It's okay. Thing. When we get to this uh, slurp master, I'm gonna pull the video up so y'all can see that. Let's shit. do it. Shit is let's let's go fire. Let's go fire. Let's let's do it. I'm ready to go. <laughs> Put that shit up, y'all. Yeah. <laughs> nah, real shit though. The way the way they was having the conversations about the rules. Mm-hmm. Oh, we yeah, finna, yeah. finna yeah. have yeah. the same. Com- yeah. I'm telling you, you see this shit, you are gonna be like, bro. What were you talking about though? About uh. The slurpy joint. What the fuck? Yeah, let's get to that. Slurpy joint? What is, the, what is that? Yeah, let's get to that. Listen. Boy. Explain so to me what this is. I don't know. It's some machine. Same. Not machine. It's like a... What's it called? Same. 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 I, I don't... <laughs> shit. I don't know. I don't know exactly what it's called. Niggas is calling it the Slurp Master. <laughs> Say it again. Slurp, slurp oh. Master. Three th- when I, I'm about to show y'all. What? What this? So not. this is the actual toy, bro. Or all, jokes, all jokes set aside, the shit look magical. Is like, it a sex all, doll? Wait, like, is it? Is it like, like you know what the flat? You know what the flashlight look like, right? So imagine that with fluid in it, and it moves on its own. You don't move this shit. This shit moves. So it's like a water park on your uh, dick. Flashlight. Right? I'm gonna show you, bro. Because I'm not. <laughs> Huh? No, no, not, 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 not. This, this isn't you. This is no, like oh, it's, it's, it's a Facebook. It's it's like, I say oh, because I'm gonna buy it. Sorry about the lock in at one twenty p.m. That's what, what we're not about to do is act like there are not dry periods in your marriage. That's what we're not going to do. The shit is real. You know what I'm saying? And like beating your dick get old. <laughs> <laughs> it does. That's just real, I, and that, that's, that's just me being transparent. Yeah, you know what I'm old. saying? Like the shit get old, and fuck that. Like you know what I'm saying? Jesus. No, like 
Jesus Christ, it's good, right? Uh, no, 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 Yes, my nigga. Oh, no. yeah. Damn, messed up, oh, right? Oh, they're messed, messed, messed up. up. <laughs> Endorse me. Um, endorse the hell out of my belt. These women are messed up, man. While he's looking that up, I'm going to slap the shit that rose in the face. <laughs> I'm so tired. of the. I bought the rose thing that we both going to have fun. But the moment where she's, I mean, she's in heaven by herself, <laughs> pisses <laughs> me off. I, I yeah. like to think it's of my personal assistant, but I feel you. Yeah, I fuck with it. Uh, yeah. No, 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 no. I'm it's with it. cool. It's cool when it's together. But when it's like I'm coming home and I've been asking for it forever, yeah. and then I hear I hear that, and I'm like, hey, 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 what, what is this? This is. And then, and then, okay, now I'm ready. Now it's like, oh man, I'm tired. You're tired. I just. What are you talking about? <laughs> are you kidding me? I just got home, and you know I knew it. So. That rose, man, I, I love I love you, but I hate you at the same time. That thing is, and then now I bought her, so she has the original rose, and then now she also has the rose with the tongue mm -hmm. at the end. Whoa. Okay. Yeah. All right. Yeah. I didn't know there was one with the tongue. Oh, for sure. That's 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 are you guys, why are you looking at us? end it there. Are you guys in the BDSN? Okay, I think we should end it here. <laughs> this has been phenomenal. <laughs> This is my great episode. <laughs> my bros came by to the Solus Talk About It podcast. Yeah. Um, and filter, um, just like how we are. Yeah. No, but this was a dope conversation. Uh, more conversations amongst men need that need to be had. For sure. Um, we talked about a lot, man. We, we impacted a lot. I hope a lot of people learned from this conversation, but also uh, felt our hearts in the conversation too, because we uh, we kept it real with y'all, hundred percent. So. Shout out to the producer, the audio producer, Brittany Garris. Thank you. you. you yes, sir, you did your thing. And shout, shout out to you, Mark. Oh, shout sure. out to you, man. Great host. I enjoyed myself. Thank you for allowing me to be a part of this. I feel honored, man, to be here with you, brother. Absolutely, bro. Appreciate it. I appreciate it, man. I'm appreciate trying you. to find this video. Please I'm sorry. That video. We're, We're definitely, definitely, We're definitely going to go. All right. <laughs> All right, y'all. We love y'all. Don't forget to rate, share, subscribe uh, to the podcast. We appreciate you all. We'll see you all. In the next episode. Boom. It's the king in my gun shot.